Okay, this is just going to be a quick video on uh, how to calculate the average uh, from a histogram. So uh, the one average that we're going to really take a look at is the uh, mean. Um, I'm not going to talk about the median in this video. Uh, I'm literally just going to talk about the uh, mean. So I want to know uh, more precisely what is the um, price that I want to pay or that I'm going to pay um, if I go to an amusement park. So basically here, I'm just going to say this is the price uh, for entry. I uh, just to put a title to this for entry to a theme park. Um, so this data might be taken a really long time ago because I don't know too many theme parks. They only pay 7 to $14 for anymore. But uh, just an example. Um, so, so basically... What I need to look at and I need to observe is uh, a couple of things. So when I take a look at any averages, we have the mode, uh, we have the mean, and then um, the mode median, and uh, then we have the median, okay? So uh, we're really gonna focus in on the mean uh, for this video of calculating. Uh, the mode's pretty easy in this one. So the mode is just the, the one that has the highest frequency. Now, the mode here would be uh, 15 to 22, so I would pay 15 to $22, all right? So now let's say I'm really coming down, I'm really, you know, it's coming down to, to, to cents, dollars and cents for me. And I really need to know, within that mode of 15 to $22, really, um, is that what I would expect it to pay? Or is it just because that is more that it would be in there? Um, now, I don't really have a great range of data here, but there are times where the actual average, the mean, won't fall in the same category as the mode. So for this video, because I don't have a lot of data to really work with, it's really just the idea of what you have to do, the process that you would have to go through. Um, it, it's, you might see some things that would happen and say, why do I need to do this? Um, but it's this for this scenario, it's not always going to be this case. Um, but because I'm limiting myself in the amount of data I have, um, you're going to find that for me, my mean today, I will tell you, is going to end up in the same category as my mode. But within that mode, what if I want to know a more precise dollar amount that I'm actually going to be paying? So how do I calculate that? Well, something that's a little bit more accurate than the mode uh, could be the mean. So let's see um, how we go ahead and do that. Now, the mean is just an average. The problem with histograms is, is that each one of these bars is not a specific amount. It's a range of values. So what we end up having to do is actually within that range of values, we need to find what's the middle of those ranges. Okay, so when you find the middle of those ranges, uh, essentially what you do is you're going to use that middle number because the middle of number uh, is essentially, no matter where the data is, because I don't know essentially, do I have all eights, nines in here, and I'm not really close to 14. Um, but either way I look at it, I'm gonna find the number that is gonna be closest to all of my data, and the number that will be closest to all of my data from seven to 14 is gonna be 10.5. Now, how did I get 10.5? Well, there's two ways. So essentially what you can do is you can take the low value of the bar, add it to the high value of the bar, and then simply divide by two, okay? So you can take seven plus 14, divide by two, and what you end up getting is 10.5. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of that because histograms for me, okay, are literally each one of these bars is going to be the same spread of values. So notice I go from 7 to 14, which is 7, 15 to 22, which is 7, 23 to 30. They're all differences of 7. So what I'm simply going to do is, well, if 7 is the whole bar, what's well, half of 7? And it's 3 and a half. So the middle of 7 to 14 is 7 plus 3 and a half, which gives me 10.5. Okay. The middle of 15 to 22, we'll take 15, add 3 and a half, I get 18.5. 23 add three and a half, I get 26.5. The middle of 39 to 46, uh, I go ahead and I'm just going to simply take that, add three, so I get 42.5. So essentially now I have the middle of all of these bars. So this is the number that's gonna be the closest to whatever data I'm saying is in there. Now, mean. How do you calculate the mean in general? Well, the mean still is, okay, it still is a total of all of your data divided by how many there are. 
So what I still need to do is I still need to figure out within the mean, this isn't going to change, is divided by the total data. Okay? So the total data in this case, well, if I look at a histogram, histograms are easy. I just look at the frequency. So this is the frequency over here. Okay? So the frequency in this case I'm going to use is the first bar is 5, the second bar is 7, the next bar is 4, the next bar is 2. Okay? So now I have the total. So in this case, I have my total of my data is 18. So this is a number that I'm going to use. So 18 becomes an important number because I need to use that still in any mean. You still divide by the total amount of data that you have. So, well, what am I going to do? Well, I've got five data values that are from 7 to 14. 10.5, I'm presuming we're predicting is going to be the closest number. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and assume that I'm going to take the average of this interval, okay, and I'm going to add them all up. Well, five 10.5s, I'm not going to show plus 10.5 plus 10.5. If I'm adding the same thing over and over again, I'm just going to show it through multiplication. So this is how we do it. We simply take the frequency of each bar and we multiply it by the middle number of that bar. So I'm going to take 5 times 10.5, and then I'm going to add to that the frequency of the next bar and its middle, so plus 7 times 18.5. I'm then going to do that for the next bar. I'm just going to repeat the process. The middle of 23 to 30 is 26.5. There are 4 in there, so plus, so 4 at 26.5. I take the next bar, which is, there's 2 at 42.5 is what I'm presuming. Okay, And when I go ahead and I take that number, what I find is that this number right here ends up being 373. So what I'm going to say is that while it may not be perfect, it may not be exact, um, and it's not the low end of my range because if I wanted to, I could find the low end of my average. And the low end of my average, I would just find the average, I would say 5 at 7, 7 at 15, and I would ignore the higher end of this bar. Okay, So I'm going to go just shoot for the middle of the road on all of these. So I get 373, Okay, that's all of these, and then I simply divide that value by 18. So I take that number, divide it by 18. And what I end up getting here is $20.72. So while I take a look at 15 to 22, all right, notice that 15 to 22, the middle of that data is 18.5. Okay, but I'm not going to presume that I'm going to pay $18.50 for any theme park that I go to on average. What I am now going to predict is realistically any park that I go around, I'm going to average that I'm going to spend $20.72 to get into that park. So that's how you find uh, the mean. Um, the median is a different uh, formula, and we could talk about that. Um, but for right now, I'm uh, just simply not going to, for this particular video, I'm really just worried about the mean. Again, notice my mean, $20.72, sure, fell between $15.22. Again, if I didn't really care down to the cent what I was going to pay, then I would say, yeah, somewhere between $15 and $22. But if I care about, say, what it is down to the cent, I might use the mean. Uh, now, this isn't precise. It isn't exactly it. Um, but it gives me a good picture, a good estimate of really what I would be paying overall.